In February of 2020, the month that the pandemic began, my brother and I started our first Amazon business. This Amazon business we took from zero to $20 million in annual revenue in two years. This was pretty unrealistic for most businesses, but I'm going to give you the exact cheat codes and strategies that we use to scale that fast. Now, before I dive into anything, I just want to let you know that the amount of work that was required to do this, it would make any logical person think that we were crazy. We were working 12 to 16 hours every single day to make this happen. So if you think that you can sit, sit back, work four to six hours, and the same results will happen, that is not true. I also want to tell you that I have been in the industry for 10 to 12 years. I know a lot of people that accelerated our relationships that we built, uh, that accelerated the strategies that we use to acquire the types of products. But most importantly right now, I'm going to walk you through that exact strategy of how we acquired the products. So the question is, why am I doing this? That's the most important thing. In 2020, we ended up selling that company to a publicly traded business, and we exited out. Uh, that publicly traded company was one of our competitors, and we have moved into Inventory.com. Inventory.com is an inventory management software. We help companies that struggle with managing their inventory, tracking their products, want to track their profit in their warehouse. Inventory management is the type of business model that we are going to focus on. Inventory.com is that business. So I want to dive in here. I want to talk about Amazon. I want to talk about a few strategies that we use. We resold products, so big brand name products, products from Johnson Johnson, Procter & Gamble, many other large companies and distribution networks that you already know. But the real question is, is how did we acquire these products? How did we meet people? And the method that I'm going to teach you is definitely unorthodox. It is different. It is out of line of how everybody else does things. A lot of people will tell you to go on Google and search wholesalers and then send them a, you know, a PO of something that you want to buy. But the reply rates are awful. You will hear people contacting 10, 12, 15,000 people only to get a few results out of it. So we want to see a lot more results and we want to see them immediately. So here's how it works. Uh, the first thing we used is a software called flipmine.com. Flipmine was made by my good friend David. I thought it was an absolute genius software. Um, I also was one of the few people who saw the extreme value in it, and I was going in there and using it every single day. So I was using it with, for a different reason than a lot of people use it for. Now, Flipmine, what it does is it allows you to do eBay to Amazon arbitrage. It allows you to find products on eBay that sell on Amazon, and you can make a marginal difference in between. And it keeps a live status update. So you'll see new products every single day that are coming in that can be bought on eBay, sold on Amazon, and a profit can be made. So what we did is we would buy those products one by one and list them from eBay to Amazon. So we would take them in, we process them, we ship them into FBA and everything. And a lot of people would be like, Hayden, what are you talking about? This is a waste of time. Let me show you the difference of what happened. Every product that we bought, we reached out to the seller as well. And when we reached out to the seller, we told them that we buy many other products related to the products that we have. And we had what's called a purchasing price list. So this was a list of about a thousand different products that we were constantly buying and the price we paid for them. So we would buy a single item. We would say, hey, we buy all these items. We'd like to buy everything else from you. You can invoice us at any time. Here's our purchasing price list. And in turn, probably about 50% of the people that we bought from had other products they had for sale. And everybody knows listing items one on one, one by one on eBay is one of the most time wasting things to do. I absolutely hate doing it. It takes forever to do. It is part of business, but it can always be outsourced very easily in this case. So a lot of these people, they don't want to hire additional employees. They don't want to outsource. They don't want to sell on eBay anymore. So they said, okay, we'll sell to you wholesale. So over time, we accumulated, you know, we'd buy a single item, then we'd buy 10 from them, then we'd buy 100 from them, then they would refer us somebody who would sell us another 100 units, then they, we would add another brand and they would add up to 150 units and soon enough, we're buying three to 400 units every single week, every single month from these types of vendors. So we repeated this process over and over and over again. I would say that we contacted probably 10 to 12,000 people over a period of two years. We would go in on eBay. We would make offers. We would message them directly. We would buy products, anything that would catch their attention and see that we were serious about it. 
And by the time that two years was up, we had roughly about 50 vendors and we were buying about a million dollars every single month. And we were doing a little bit over $1.8 million every single month. Um, we were selling wholesale. We were selling on Amazon. We were selling on eBay. We were selling on Walmart. So it was very scalable. It was extremely profitable. And we were able to continuously grow with the strategy that we used. So I want to walk through a few more things uh, to talk about on Amazon, understanding the type of products that we bought. First off, we, you have to understand how Amazon works. You will not be able to just sell any product. You will be gated in certain categories and for certain products. And over time, you can become ungated. We did use uh, my good friend Steve at The Funnel Guru. He can help you uh, to expedite the process of getting ungated in certain categories or certain brands. But over time, you have to build the relationship and the trust with Amazon in order to get ungated in some of these categories and some of these brands. And there are some brands out there that you'll never be able to get ungated for. You can possibly buy an account that's already ungated, but they aren't accepting any new sellers. So those types of products were products that we also had access to that a lot of other people weren't able to sell on Amazon, gave us a huge competitive advantage. So that's one thing you need to understand is Amazon gating. Second thing you need to understand is Keepa pricing. So Keepa is an application that's used inside of Amazon that tracks the data history, the sales ranking, quite a bit of information related to Amazon product listings. The Keepa data that we used that was really important to us is number one, we want to see the lowest price the item sold for on FBA over the last 12 months. We always based on the lowest price over the last 12 months. The spikes can change, it can gradually go up, but we always based on the lowest. This ensured that we were profitable, that prices wouldn't you know, depreciate and we would lose money because it was currently inflated, the, all those types of scenarios. Uh, when you're selling on Amazon FBA, you have to buy the product, product comes in, you ship it to FBA, Amazon has to sell it and then you get paid. By the time you buy the product to the time you get paid, we're talking three, two to three, even four month turnaround time. So it's quite a long time to understand that. On those Keepa charts as well, you can see other information like who holds the majority of the buy box. That was very important. If Amazon was dominating it, odds are that we're not going to be selling nearly as much. So we don't want to buy a ton of quantity of those types of products. Over time, we were able to analyze this information very well, predict how many items would be sold, and make sure that we forecast their inventory correctly to not overbuy that type of product. And then from that point on, competition is the biggest thing. So I really don't care about competition on Amazon. I understand it's very competitive in a lot of areas and stuff, but the reality is, is you just have to follow the numbers and make sure that your competition doesn't undercut those numbers. So what we did is we saw the lowest prices that we we're selling for, and then we priced accordingly to everybody else. We didn't undercut anybody and drive the price down. And in turn, Amazon has so much volume that if you have a good product listing and you're selling you know, a good product, you're going to sell out. So we would only sell products that were ranked 50,000 or lower. Very common products that we would sell are like Claritin, Allegra, Zyrtec. Those are allergy medications. And those are all selling tens of thousands of units every single month. So we could never get enough quantity. And we would love to buy 10,000 units of Zyrtec if that were possible. Uh, we just never had that much volume in that case. So this is the type of situation if you pay attention to your numbers and you you know follow the data competition really doesn't matter i don't care if there's five sellers or there's 50 sellers on a listing if you follow the data and you do it accurately you're going to sell your product because amazon is the mecca of sales so this process was used over and over um, in order for us to scale again it requires a lot of work we had a team of five to six people that were just processing strictly fba orders we were shipping out you know, two, three, four thousand units every single day, in and out, coming out, very fast processing time on that. And this is the process that we used over and over again. Now, as we grew, we realized that we needed better inventory management software, we needed better warehouse management software, and this is where inventory.com really came into play. So what we did is we built a software to track all of our products, we built a software that processes in our products faster by just scanning barcodes instead of manually typing all of that information that people do. And then we were able to track our profits. And then the most important thing, we were able to forecast our revenue. So we saw what was coming in, what was being shipped out, how much we were going to do the next month in sales. And then we could see how much we needed to reorder. 
So if we had bought too many models of a certain product, we wouldn't rebuy it because we could see on our inventory that we had overbought and we would have stocked the next two months. There's no point in buying that inventory. That is where we really dominated because our cash flow turned so quickly. We were able to turn our cash flow anywhere between six and 12 times every single year, which is incredibly amazing for an inventory-based business, especially in the FBA space. So putting all of this together, bundling the systems we use, bundling the strategy we use, bundling our uh, proprietary listings, bundling our customers and our large vendor database, this was extremely attractive to our competition. We also had certain contracts and agreements with a few other brands for volume. And in turn, we approached our competition, one of the people that we were working with on wholesale deals, on certain brand deals, and we said, hey, would you be interested in acquiring the rest of our company? And they, within a couple of days, we already had a deal put together in an agreement and the deal was done. And I am thankful to say it was a very successful uh, business exit in that case. So that company is still operating today and we still earn a paycheck too every single uh, month from them. So that is pretty cool. And it's good to do business with, you know, honest, reliable people in that case. So this is a strategy that we use to find profitable products on Amazon. If this is something that interests you, leave a comment below. Um, if you'd like to, me to talk or explain about other things, I'd love to do that and help you out with that. Other than that, I'll talk to you later. Have a great day.